Angels and Demons Beside You by Joshua P. Warren Chapter 1 The Physical The Big Bang sprayed an infinite spectrum of electromagnetic frequencies all across the cosmos. Some high, some low, some giant, some tiny. A frequency is just a traveling pulse, and it is these resonant pulses that hold matter and form in place. If you sprinkle sand on top of a piece of cardboard and place it on top of a speaker, the sand will snap into a series of beautiful organized patterns when certain tones are played. When you stop playing the tone, the sand falls into a random disorganized spread once again. Pockets of resonant energy form the three-dimensional molds that hold the denser material cluster. Hence, we have a connection between the seen and unseen, the visible and invisible worlds. You, yourself, are an energy pattern resonating at a particular frequency. The things that resonate at a rate similar to yours are the things you touch, what you call the physical world. However, those things that resonate at a rate you cannot touch like radio waves and gamma rays, are not physical to you in this incarnation. If you were made of radio waves, you would slam into a radio wave like an impenetrable wall. But since radio waves are much larger than you, they pass all around you like phantoms. The same goes for gamma rays, constantly zipping in from the cosmos, except they are simply too small for you to feel. There are some frequencies, however, that are close to the borderline. Microwaves, for example, are just close enough to our physical realm to interact somewhat. They can make the molecules begin to quiver fast enough to produce heat. That is why, simply enough, your cheeseburger heats up when you put it in the microwave oven. There are surely a myriad of frequencies that are primarily outside the physical, but just close enough to affect us. And within those frequencies, what we often call a spiritual realm, there is also life. Many of the beings there may be crude by our standards, the beastly things like hellhounds or mothmen that occasionally slip in and out of our realms when the conditions are right. It's possible our vast physical animal kingdom is almost mirrored by a plethora of strange creatures in the spirit realm. But some of the more advanced forms of life there, those more like humans, are what our human cultures have come to know as angels and demons. Chapter 2 Spiritual Natural Selection If we strip away all the noise and look at life from the most objective and clinical point of view, all living things consume energy. Each breath of air you take, each sip of liquid, each gulp of food, every time you push a gas pedal or turn a switch on, you are consuming energy. Therefore, we shall use this as a guideline for how all living things could or can exist. Since angels and demons are living things, let's start there. We know that natural selection exists. We can watch it happening every day. The reason we must constantly update vaccines is that harmful germs continue to strengthen. The few strong ones that are able to fend off a vaccine survive to pass along their strong genes, eventually creating a stronger generation of germs. The new vaccines must be formed to combat their evolution. This same ongoing struggle is seen between insects that devour crops and the insecticides used to keep them at bay. And the process works even more simply with obvious traits. There are few dark-colored creatures in snowy regions because they stand out more against the background, 
making themselves easily targeted prey for predators. Therefore, their genes do not get passed along. In the world of rational thinkers, natural selection is an obvious fact of life, and yet most have only thought of it in terms of the physical world of organisms, the same one that Darwin studied. However, it seems logical that this basic system would also function throughout all life forms, including those that are primarily non-physical to us. And so, spiritual natural selection must exist as well. Thus, where do humans fall in the lineup? If we look at humans as spiritual beings, in addition to their mere physical shells, we gain a clearer idea of how the spirit has evolved and will continue to do so. For clues on how this evolution transpired, let us look back at the physical world of organisms. Animals are desperate to survive, and so they thoughtlessly consume. This is why a lion might eat every gazelle on his plane with delight, only to find there are eventually no more left to reproduce and maintain his food supply. At that point, the lion may starve. Similarly, a dog might wolf down a chunk of meat in an alleyway, only to be poisoned and die. This approach to survival is limited in sight, providing the sense of immediate fulfillment, but at the risk of long-term survival. This is an unenlightened way of consuming. On the other hand, humans have learned to tend to their food supply. We try to protect the populations we eat, ensuring that cattle and fish reproduce to maintain what is needed. We try to limit how much we take from a land to retain its ability to grow more crops. And we work together through advanced communication and complex societies, striving to ensure that food is prepared and served in a safe and healthy fashion. This is why humans have generally and consistently lived longer, healthier lives as the ages have progressed. So let us apply these two models to spiritual evolution. A less evolved spiritual creature would be one that consumes selfishly and stupidly. A more evolved spiritual creature would be one that has understood a valuable lesson about how the universe works. The more you give, the more you receive. It can also be broken down into demons and angels, with humans right in the middle of the ladder. Chapter 3 the battle for your soul. It sounds silly to think of beings literally battling for our souls, but this takes on a surprisingly practical twist when you view this in terms of energy consumption. All life can only come from life. Therefore, all spirit is the same substance. This means we are each a particular individual, temporary condensation of a collective, everlasting energy mass. Your brain is the current interface between your identity and the whole. This means that, on a spiritual level, demons, humans, and angels are all made of the same thing. However, the particular form one occupies depends on how enlightened one has become to survive. The idea of angels above is a reference to their higher frequencies, and the idea of demons below is a reference to their lower frequencies. Those in the human form occupy a special position between the angels and demons. Evil is defined by a complete and absolute self-centered attitude and behavior. An evil being can kill, steal, and violate 
without any remorse, because it has zero consideration for others. Therefore, goodness is just the opposite. Goodness is a pure desire to give and help others. Though it may seem like only an evil attitude will therefore allow you to survive, the irony is that the more you truly give, the more you will be truly rewarded. This is due to a peculiar principle of the universe that seems utterly counterintuitive, but has been continually reinforced by every major spiritual figure revered throughout human history. Essentially, we all must consume in order to survive. However, there are two ways of doing it. One is to take and take alone. The other is to give and be rewarded in the long term by the basic rule that to receive you must give and then all will work in harmony. Since we are all made of the same stuff, we can say that demons are humans in lower frequency form. Because they are takers, their full forms are dense. When glimpsed from time to time, they appear dark, because light cannot easily penetrate their forms. They are parasites that will latch on to vulnerable people and drain their energy over time. When this happens, the person becomes agitated, aggressive, and illogical, like a scared, wounded animal. The person's behavior will become self-destructive, and he or she will eventually die by sheer self-neglect or taking unnecessary risks. It is the goal of the demon to feed as long as possible before inevitably killing its victim, just like a deadly parasitic worm. Angels, on the other hand, are higher frequency beings that appear much lighter and can even radiate luminously when seen sometimes. They are here to help you. In fact, the angel has evolved to its state via spiritual natural selection by acts of charity and giving. The angel's energy is provided by the universe in return for helping you. Instead of taking all of an individual's energy, an angel will help a hundred people, knowing that a portion of each person's energy will symbiotically go back to the angel, sustaining its long life and the lives of those helped. Therefore, it's in the angel's self-interest to help you. Though we cannot fully comprehend their highly advanced ways, it seems they are almost like filters, happily consuming your negative energies because they are advanced and strong enough to properly digest them. Angels are simply waiting there to help you, and you may enlist their assistance at any time to improve your life's noble wishes. Isn't that a wonderful thought? But they can't force their help on you. You must ask sincerely. Humans are in a very special position. Humans have the chance to become angels or demons. If a human takes on a positive giving attitude and is charitable, tolerant, and good, his or her frequency will rise. Once you adopt this attitude, you'll feel better about yourself. You'll walk more erect and confidently, smiling and interacting with your fellow humans with warmth and compassion. When you finally die, the material debris of your body falls away, but the spiritual frequency you have achieved will determine the realm you are capable of perceiving and entering next. You are therefore creating your next life right now. Hopefully you are making a heaven for yourself since your thoughts and attitudes send you onward to the matching place. You can become an angel yourself someday. 
or you can do just the opposite. Unfortunately, plenty of people throughout history have done their best to become demons. The encyclopedias are replete with serial killers, sadists, and those who enjoy the darkest and most twisted of depraved, hurtful, selfish behaviors. Their frequency has been lowered to the demonic realm. When they die, they will enter that horror they have created, and the journey can continue downward from there. Yet, in this vast, timeless universe, this whole thing may be a perpetual cycle in which all of us have gradually slipped up and down this ladder many, many times. Perhaps someday the background state of the universe itself will finally change so much that the demonic frequency simply no longer exists, at least for a while. Chapter 4 Humans and Other Beings With the model I have given you of a ladder of enlightenment with humans in the middle, let's now look even deeper at what a human actually is. Suppose I showed you a computer screen displaying a tree and asked, What do you see? You might be tempted to tell me you see a tree. However, we both know there is not actually a tree there. All you are looking at is a pattern of information organized on a machine projecting photons of light at various frequencies at your eyes perceived as arranged colors. The tree merely exists in your mind. Now, I could hit the print button and produce a physical representation of this tree, but the tree itself still only exists in your mind. Humans are like this tree. We are patterns of information communicating with each other. If you crack open a skull and cut open a brain looking for the source of the human, you won't find much. Those parts are simply the machines like the computer that delivers the stream of information that is actually you. This is why you cannot die. Just as we can rip up the paper, the print out of the tree, your body can and will change and disintegrate, but the information that is you is there, and in fact will always be there. In the book Look Homeward Angel. One of my favorite authors, Thomas Wolfe, is reflecting on the death of his beloved brother Ben. He wrote, quote, We can believe in the nothingness of life. We can believe in the nothingness of death and of life after death. But who can believe in the nothingness of Ben? End quote. Your human identity is at the crux of these issues regarding life, death, and the cosmos. You have been and will be in various forms. But if we have ourselves and angels and demons, who are all these other characters, like aliens? Well, firstly, it's important to consider that the so-called ancient book of worldwide multicultural imaginary creatures is never-ending. It's impossible to address all the sprites and brownies and windigos and you name it that may or may not exist in true form. But the alien phenomenon is too pronounced to ignore, and one we should mention since many have wondered about the connection between aliens, angels, and demons. Essentially, aliens fit very nicely into this world view. Obviously, just as the earthly realm of physical organisms is an explosion of extremely different types of life forms branching in all directions, 
we can expect the same to have happened on the spiritual, that is, primarily non-physical, realms. So, take a guess where most people call aliens are. Do you think they're more toward the angelic side or the demonic? Due to stories about abductions and mutilations, many might think typical aliens zipping around in flying saucers are more demonic. However, they are actually on the angelic side, more evolved than humans. We know this because they use technologies that are superior to ours. Even though their craft may look physical, there is plenty of evidence to suggest the craft are actually made of a conscious, sensitive material that is often saucer-like in its most aerodynamic form when flying in the Earth's atmosphere, but is capable of morphing into different shapes depending on its environment. Yet, please bear in mind, just because these beings are more advanced than humans on the angelic side, that does not mean they are more angelic. Some of them may be, but others have probably begun a downward slide on a separate branch, lowering back toward the selfish demonic energies. The most advanced angelic beings have no need of human-like technology, they have reached such a state of enlightenment that their consciousness and imagination is not hampered by our perceived limitations. They are able to travel wherever they need and appear in whatever form, driven by pure intention alone. This is the freedom afforded by harmony with the universe. Altogether, it is important for you to consider the popular alien phenomenon since it's a good example of just how complex the subject of spiritual evolution can become, especially regarding beings that skirt in and out of the boundaries we consider physical and non-physical. This subject has spun off thousands of books and a whole lineup of weird characters that may or may not exist, depending on the glimpse you may or may not get. Always remember, most of the fish in the oceans have no idea that humans exist. Statistically, a human fish encounter is a rare thing indeed. Chapter 5 Stopping Demons and Attracting Angels If you now feel they exist, you are no doubt wondering how to deal with angels and demons in your life. Fortunately, the subject does not have to be extremely complicated. From the strictest biological perspective, your life can be boiled down to binary reactions. Your heart clenches then relaxes. Your breath goes in and out. And so your body's energy interface with all around you ultimately makes your biofrequency raise and your soul expand or your biofrequency lower and your soul contract. Use your body as an antenna to feel whether or not something around you is good or bad. Does it make you want to expand or contract? If something is bad for you, your body is weakened. This makes you vulnerable. Stay in environments that make you feel strong and positive and surround yourself with people that feel the same. Demons will hang out around vulnerable people. So if you venture toward the vulnerable, be especially cautious. Aside from your environment, fill your mind with positive content and keep your body physically healthy and strong, just as you would to avoid getting a cold. If you believe there is a demon attached to you, 
then change your environment and diet to a positive one. Next, ask for help. Try an angel. Angels are there all around, eager to help you all the time. They will even travel and run errands for you, believe it or not. If you're having a problem with someone, ask an angel to soar to that person and help you resolve the situation with the most positive possible outcome for everyone involved. You might be surprised how things turn out. Anytime you have a problem, ask an angel to represent you and send the angel away with all your trust and authority. The angel benefits when you benefit, so send your positive thoughts to the angel often. And if you're perceptive enough, you might even get a glimpse of the angel working for you, or hear the angel's voice, or see the angel's name and recognize it. The universe is always trying to speak with you. The language of the universe is synchronicity, and the more you pay attention to the connections around you in your life, the more clues and insight you will have regarding what is happening around you. Knowledge is power, and this will give you the power to make informed, wise, effective decisions. Chapter 6. The Best Thing You Can Do You've heard this a million times in your life, and there's a reason for it. But this time, let it sink in. The way you help yourself is by giving to others. It is not something you should be forced to do, but something you should do because it works. It doesn't even matter if you give begrudgingly. All that matters is that you give. In fact, you should do so without accepting or expecting anything at all in return. That is what makes it work. Once you give, you will start to see miracles happen in your life that will get you through tight pinches, whatever they may be. This is a weird principle of the universe that must be experienced to truly believe. Since we possess animal instincts, it seems unnatural to do this. And that is why all the spiritual teachers have stressed the need for faith. It's not because you're believing in something that doesn't exist. It's because you must be advanced enough to imagine your reward. This is what makes you special. This is what makes your mind and spirit evolve. This is the smart thing to do. This is how you rise above and become free. This is how you become an angel. Thanks for listening. Please visit joshuapwarren.com to open your mind and see some amazing stuff. Again, that's joshuapwarren.com.